make it. Good to be tight. This could be the answer to all of our provisioning needs. Yeah. Certain boats of a certain age suffer from dribbly injectors. <laughs> it's um, perfectly natural. It's the way of the Polynesians. I'm just embracing the culture. We're kind of falling apart at the seams. There might actually be some food on the island. It's all good. Who needs vegetables in their diet anyway? Fingers crossed, he'll just like look at the engines and know instantly what's wrong with them. We just heard back from the mechanic who came to check on the port engine and... Um, Last time on Red Seas, we celebrated our arrival into French Polynesia and then got straight to work with our first boat project following our Pacific crossing. I made a new name patch for our stack pack, which has long been overdue. We continued our recovery by swimming with these manta rays almost every day as they came to visit us right off the back of our boat. Ian caught his biggest fish ever when he landed this giant wahoo to feed a hundred people. And we made loads of new friends in the anchorage with a beach fire and a feast. We've been waiting for the local mechanic to work on our engines, and although we had some good news, we definitely aren't out of the woods yet, so now it's time to get them sorted. Our team, having spent the last few weeks pretty much just sat here at anchor, uh, we have just heard news at last. The mechanic has returned to Hiva'oa, which is the next island just up there. It's not very far away, but it is gonna be a bit of a beat because we have to tack our way up through a channel right into wind of course and it's a pretty windy day so it could be kind of fun i think either way when we get there we can get all of our spares and uh we can maybe get a bit of help on a once over on the engines just to reassure us because uh, indy ain't so happy right now we've checked the oil level in both engines we've checked the coolant level in both engines they both seem good so we're going to try both engines and see how much maneuverability we have as we're lifting anchor and if all goes well it should make the other end much much easier than last time and Fingers crossed, we don't need to use our dinghy to uh, anchor our boat and make it safe. Here goes. The port engine is working to some extent. We managed to get out of the anchorage okay, and I was able to use it just a little bit to hold position as we put the mainsail up. Um, and now we're seeing like 30 knots of wind. We are beating into it, we're flying along really. Um, the conditions are not too bad. There's a little bit of swell, but nothing too crazy. And I'm just trying to calm myself down. It's, it's so weird. Like we're just doing a little short hop from one island to another. It's something that we've done so many times before. But I have all of the emotional baggage of just having finished our passage and having faced up to so many fears of things breaking and having to fix them and everything going wrong. And this is the first time we're sailing the boat again. Plus the added difficulty of not having the engines and the maneuvering in tight spots and stuff being a bit difficult. So when the wind is just a bit higher than we were expecting and I don't know, I just haven't had that feeling of hearing the wind whistling through everything and it sounds big and a little bit scary and I'm just having to remember to to breathe and to know that we can do this. And I'm just expecting constantly something major to go wrong. And I need to just shake that fear and remember that, well, even if it does, we'll survive it. We'll get around it. We always do. But um, to try and enjoy where we are because this is French Polynesia and it's ridiculous. How's the sailing? It's going well, actually. Yeah, we might manage it on the next tack. We've been zigzagging our way up from over there and we were trying to get around that corner. So it's very rem reminiscent of Scottish sailing, actually. There's rain clouds in the distance, green hills everywhere, <laughs> and you're always going to tack to get anywhere you want to go. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The difference is the wind hasn't changed direction yet, so we're winning on that front. <laughs> How's the hand? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> we're kind of falling apart at the seams. Oh yeah, I have a very small nick on this hand from the fishing line with the giant wahoo. This one, um, I, I, this morning I woke up all excited because I was showing you that uh, it started to heal and join together again. And then we were lifting the dinghy and I managed to rip it open. Yeah, that was dramatic. So that was a paint job on the deck. And then the other day uh, we were flying the drone around and I brought it in to land. And normally 
there's like, you can press a button to land the drone, but we often catch the drone and turn it upside down and it kind of turns itself off. But for some reason, on occasion, we do that and it just doesn't. Instead, it tries to fly really hard towards the ground. So I flipped it over and then it flew at high speed trying to get to the deck and it clipped, basically took a chunk off the end of my finger. So uh, yeah, that's probably the most annoying of the, the current injuries, I think. Yeah, you've been in the wars since we arrived. I don't know what it is. I didn't break that much on passage. And then we get here and I'm like, oh, let's do some catching up. Uh, I'll just, I don't need that finger anymore. <laughs> or danger to yourself. Can't take you anywhere. Ridiculous. So yeah, I need to try and glue myself back together. Oh, maybe I can buy super glue when we get there. You are not putting super glue in your wounds. It'll hold it together. It worked in the war. So we've got another tack to do. It's like getting narrower and narrower and we're just trying to get around the headland. This could be our final tack. Ian reckons that we might just sneak past and all the way into the anchorage. I think that we're not going to make it and we're going to have to like zigzag again. Feeling Endless confident? Endless optimism. <laughs> Endless optimism in abundance. I'm not denying you that. Oh, I think we can do it. I'm pretty sure if we get ourselves past Point Teuhu Te Tahua. Oh yeah, that then famous place. That's a very famous spot. Then I reckon <laughs> we can get ourselves past that point all the way in. All right. Single tack. Let's do it. All right, what do you think? Um, We're gonna make it. It's gonna be tight. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't anticipate point Papahava. No, Papahava. Papahava? Sure. Sure, I didn't anticipate that one. It's, we'll see, it's gonna be tight. I... Yeah, might need another tack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying anything. Didn't, didn't say a thing. No, no, not me. Well, we had to put a little tack in. And uh, all at once, a squall came through. Now our windows died. A little tack. So we've shaken out a reef in Genoa. We are making not very much speed at all, but it's probably time to tack again and then we can just make our way into Anchorage. We're nearly there. Very relaxed, very casual sail. It's just a normal little afternoon wonder. Yeah. It's what we've you want to stop shaking. It's fine. It's all good. And actually it's quite nice because that little tic tac, as we're calling it, to get ourselves around the headland, it just means it's unveiled yeah. the uh, harbor, I suppose, the anchorage at least, that we're aiming for. It's so funny because all of my memories of coming into Hiva Oa before are just so kind of clouded with 39 days of ocean passage and then like not knowing what we were coming to and then not, you know, stumbling in, crawling in. Pyrex pickle blowfish, permission to land. <laughs> You guys are gonna have to talk me down. I got some damage. Wait, hold it, hold it. Okay, Topper. These are in. Landing gear's frozen. Looking good. Lost my radar. A, a little more power now. I'm out of fuel. Right for lineup. Lost a wing. Doing fine. There goes the other one. Okay, Topper. Call the ball. Touching down. Now it's like, oh, I know what I'm coming to. We're going for a purpose. We're going to get the engine sorted and fixed. And then life and then will be wonderful! Getting out of Dodge, because it's not that pleasant in Anchorage. It's really not. It's so <laughs> rolly and crammed, but um, yeah, we won't be there for long, says she. So our little tic tac has brought us beautifully into the bay. We are making really good speeds now, just like whipping across. And uh, we're just going to see how close in we can get so that we can just drop the sails at the last second and not have to use our engines for very long. Well, this is the first time for everything. <laughs> we, I think, managed it. Um, we actually don't really know how to do it. We've never done mid mooring properly on this boat. Um, so yeah, we, we basically went out, we dropped the anchor and uh, Briny let out the anchor chain as we kind of reversed very slowly to the wall. And thankfully both engines were doing okay. We then got very close to the wall so that we could throw our lines up over these big metal uh, bollards that are here for usually the delivery uh, provision ship that comes in. Um, I'm really hoping they don't come in this week because I don't want to move. But, uh, but yeah, so we threw our lines over. A nice guy came along in his car and actually he gave us a hand because uh, we were struggling to get the second line up onto the wall. 
And then once we got them on, we kind of let ourselves drift back out towards the anchor and brought in some anchor chain until Indy's just kind of jiggling back and forth between the anchor and the wall. So hopefully tonight we can sleep and we don't wake up on that wall or against any of those boats because it's really busy in this anchorage. This is why we're against the wall. Um, the anchorage is known to be super busy, but also it swells, uh, swirls with the wind. And so all the boats start hitting each other. And we, we figured it'd be easier if we're doing engine works to just keep it simple. So the wind was really picking up this morning and uh, kind of blowing us sideways off the dock. And uh, it was just making horrible noises that we didn't like. So we slipped the lines and moved out and find to try, spa try to find a space in the anchorage. But it is crazy tight out here. And uh, there's a boat two behind us who are just trying to lift their anchor and the boat in front of them is just sitting directly on top of their anchor, so they can't lift. So Ian has just buzzed over in the dinghy to try and use Link to, to push the monohull out of the way and hopefully they can creep forward and retrieve their anchor enough. But it is so crazy tight in here. And as soon as the wind swings, I have no idea how all these boats are going to sit. Ian's back from his rescue mission and then Dustin, the single-handed sailor, dropped by with a whole ton of bananas that somebody on Tahuata gave him. And he's got far too many to eat, so we traded some for some wahoo. So cool, huh? <laughs> This is, this wahoo is really, well, that wasn't an exchange. We just gave him that because we were being friendly. Yeah, yeah, okay. he just needed to get rid of all but the But I love that all of these cruisers, everyone we bumped into, there's this element of like, oh, well, we have spare of this. Do you want it? Do you want it? What can we do to help? So yeah. we're help each other out. Yeah, no, it's so very nice. cool. It's very cool. So we're going to try and hang these up outside to stop any bugs going inside. But I do not think we're going to eat all these. So it's, um, we're going to have to make some more friends to make another delivery run, I think. Yeah, or you're making a lot of bread. How did the, um, how did the rescue go? The rescue, it was fine. It was, um, it was exactly as you thought. Their anchor was just underneath the transom of this boat. Right, yeah. So they'd been trying to kind of do what we do, shimmy forward and then kind of wait for the boat to swing and then shimmy <laughs> forward again and it wasn't working for them. So uh, yeah, just by like, I was nice enough to move our anchor chain out the way of the bow of the dinghy. So it was rubber on the side of this, this boat that no one's home. And, uh, and then yeah, it moved over fine, to be honest. It wasn't a problem. Cool. Okay, so now we're going to head into shore into the dinghy dock to pick up the mechanic, bring him out here, and fingers crossed he'll just like look at the engines and know instantly what's wrong with them. Uh, we're going to find out if we need to kind of hang around here for a long time for things to get fixed or if we have to order in parts. First things first, we just need to get him on board. Antifreeze, yeah, okay, yeah. So it all left the engine. And, uh, by bilge, by the, in the boat. Don't know about it. Don't know. No. Um, and then the oil, the lubrication. We'll see. Yeah. And on the other side? Other side is uh, all, only problem I know of. I think there is an uh, oil leak. So you can smell the. Uh, the coolant. Yeah, there's a little bit of white smoke coming out the exhaust. Yeah, yeah. and when we run, if I run the engine for reversing and I boom, then we get uh, white steam or smoke uh, from the exhaust. Oh. Try to stop? Sure, yeah. Well, Vincent has had a really good look at both engines. We've had them in idle, we've had them in four gear and reverse, looking at like any stuff coming out the exhaust. And he thinks that we might have got very lucky and got away with not doing any serious, awful damage to the engine. So that would be amazing. We're just gonna give them a big cleanup. We're gonna replace all the filters and stuff and then see where we're at at that point. But fingers crossed, we might actually still have two engines. So we've replaced the filters and stuff in the engine. Um, we're still getting some white smoke when we like push the accelerator a little bit. So we're gonna go pick up one of the guys from the yard and he's gonna come and take a look at our injectors. We, I don't know what could be wrong with them. I don't know if they can be just like cleaned and fixed or if they need to be replaced and we have to order parts in, but yes, we're still working our way towards a solution. Certain boats of a certain age suffer from dribbly injectors. <laughs> it's um, perfectly natural. And um, there, there are things that can be done to mitigate that issue. And another good news, 
the supply ships come in. So we don't have to make our one last solitary potato last another week, which was getting quite a challenge, but there might actually be some food on the island, which is very, very good news. <laughs> Busy bit the dingy dog. So what's really interesting about the way this island and pretty much all the Marquesas work is they're so far away from main international ports and like growing stuff <laughs> that they actually ship everything in. So every, uh, what, two to three, two to five weeks, I don't know, depends what the weather's doing, this big container ship comes in, you know, big, it's not that big. This large vessel comes in. It's bigger than Indy. <laughs> smidge bigger than Indy. And it comes in with all the resources for the island, obviously with the exception of like fruit, which they grow here themselves, obviously. Yeah, I think basically you can get fruit locally, but all like meat. vegetables and meat are flown in, I don't know, from New Zealand to Papiete and then I think like, Tahiti. Yeah, and then... Tahiti. And then from there, it kind of gets distributed out across French Polynesia. I have heard on one island that basically you have one hour after the supply ship arrives on whatever day of the month it comes, you've then got one hour to buy vegetables because then they're just all gone. I think here they, um, they, they hold system, some back right? and they kind of like put a little bit out each day so that it doesn't just get mobbed. But sure. fingers crossed there'll still be some left tomorrow. Fingers crossed. the busiest I've ever seen it. It's like a full-on community operation. It's insane. I didn't know they had forklift trucks, but I guess they come in on the ship. Oh, do you think they bring them with them for the unloading process? Maybe. It's great. It's, it feels like everyone's here with their bit of paper going, I ordered toothpicks and toothbrushes. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're in container seven. And just like everything gets unloaded and picked apart. And then yeah, everything's here. Gas supplies, petrol supply. So much toilet roll. So the, all the toilet roll for an entire island of people. <laughs> it's cool. Even the police are out directing traffic. It's so complicated. Bonjour. We visited the boatyard again to pick up one of the guys who was going to come and continue the work on the engine. It was a long day of toing and froing, but we hoped we would start getting close to some answers soon. All right, so while he's in there having a look, uh, we realized we actually went out of food. Yeah, we're going to try and take advantage of the fact that there's suddenly food on the island. And before everybody else buys everything, we're going to do this delightful 45 minute walk. Each up, way, up each way. Down the other side, we're trekking to fill our Yes. We will get lots of lovely goodies. We'll see. Everyone here is always really expensive, so fingers crossed it's not going to kill us. We might just come back with the basics. So, uh, yeah, a long walk head and then behind us. Oh, that's so much more. <laughs> this is going to be so fun. You're complaining already. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And then this was another element of unexpected solution finding. <laughs> we are getting so resourceful. I uh, went for a little bit of a walk yesterday and I got a blister from my flip-flops. And of course, I don't have another pair of flip-flops. So Plasters won't stick to my foot, so I'm just wrapping a leaf around. It's like nature's plaster. Except it doesn't stay on your shoe. Well, it falls lasts off. about 10 paces, but I, that's why I've got a supply. It's the way of the Polynesians. I'm just embracing the culture. Ah! We've walked around the bay. My uh, leaf solution is definitely not working, but You've now got to the point where you can look through the trees and see all the boats again. Well, it's reassuring when Indy's just sitting well behaved and not you know, <laughs> lifted away or hit someone else. Well, particularly in this anchorage, last night, in fact, yesterday afternoon, I was literally pushing someone else's dinghy on their davits, like lifted out the water, pushing their dinghy off the back of our boat when it was maybe this close. Yeah, they said they were leaving this morning, so I was hopeful that we'd have a bit more space, but we haven't. Yeah, yeah. we're not early birds, so uh, uh, I think no. our plans have probably changed. Yeah. <laughs> never, like, totally... What's the word? Encouraging, relaxing <laughs> to be in a place where you're like constantly looking at the boats next door and waiting for the wind to shift, which it does all the time here. We're like yeah. spinning 360. Yeah, this bay is known because everyone's so close together. It's known for boats just bouncing off each other. A lot of people just so, sit with uh, all of their fenders out, like, just in case. And we, we lost a fender on the way. Yeah, so now did. we don't have that many fenders. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, how do we survive? I don't know. 
So I know you're totally not going to be able to see this on the camera, but no we chance. were just walking up, about to like peel around the coast away from the bay. And one last glance down to the boats here, which we describe this bay as like the car park. It is not a nice place to be. It's where you come when you have to be here to get work done. And we were just glancing down. We were like, oh, look, oh, look, there's a manta ray swimming around that boat. And then we look a bit more. I think we've counted 10 so far. 10. All like at the surface, playing around, one doing a backflip, some of them like flicking their wingtips at the surface. Like, just where in the world are we that we're walking through a car park and there's manta rays? Just chilling out. And I bet nobody down there has noticed them either. Well, you wouldn't swim in that water. Well, oh, that would be even worse, actually, if they were right there and you were like, oh, but I really don't want to don't swim. Want to At least up there. here, that's not, you know, it's not an option. We're too far away. So the town of Atorona is like insanely beautiful. They've like got artwork and sculptures and cool stuff everywhere. We just managed to get to the shop before they closed for lunch, which because it's French country, there's like a two and a half hour lunch break. But my goodness, it scares me every time we go to buy food on a remote island. <laughs> like, it's crazy. We bought, they basically had no fresh vegetables whatsoever. Um, no potatoes, no carrots. The peppers were tiddly, so I wasn't gonna buy anything else. Um, so I'm not quite sure what food we've bought and how long it'll last us, but then we got to the till and it cost us like $80. So, $80 and we, like, we half filled a backpack with like not even the basics. Yeah. We don't have milk or anything in there. It's, yeah, I got some ham crazy. and some cheese. I did get a bar of chocolate. <sighs> okay, I added a lollipop at the end because um, I needed the sustenance. So yay, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. I think this is that like is a... A mental crutch. Yeah, that's that's what I'm holding on to for now. We just have to <laughs> a lot. thing to get us through the day. That's it. We just ah! have to do a lot more fishing, and then we'll be fine. Yeah, that's it's all good. Who needs vegetables in their diet anyway? Nah. Why are you so smug? So I'm just saying that we have no money and we don't know how to buy food. Um, we've scavenged. There were some people cutting down like loads of trees along some posh house, and at the bottom were loads of these, which I don't currently know what they are, but somebody gave us some breadfruit the other day which was really yummy and I'm hoping that that's what this is. If not, and it's some kind of weird crazy tasting thing, then we'll just make smoothies and have to be brave. But this could be the answer to all of our provisioning needs. You're about to poison me, aren't you? Yes, quite possibly, but we'll just add a bunch of sugar and it can't go wrong. So we just heard back from the mechanic who came to check on the port engine and um, it's really not good. Uh, basically he has said that the engine is dead. He literally did this. Uh, he says it's overheated so much that it is uh, chewed up metal, which you can see in the oil and uh, a whole list of problems. And uh, yeah, I suppose the long story short is that to repair or replace this engine is going to be literally thousands of dollars and we we don't keep a budget with thousands of dollars spare so yeah this this could literally be the end of red seas <laughs>